Hello guys and welcome to chemistry class and of course in this episode of chemistry we are going to be talking about polymorphism and allotropy. Chemistry and we are going to be looking at polymorphism, polymorphism and allotropy. These are very easy concepts that you will understand easily. All right. So, but before I continue this video, I would like you to quickly click on the subscribe button on this channel. Just be behind, below this video. Just click on that red subscribe button. You are not paying anything to subscribe. Or it's very, very. It's free to subscribe. It's just so that you can get notification once we release another new video. It does not mean that you are paying. You are not paying anything. It's free to subscribe. Click on the red subscribe button on this video. Then give us a like, please. Give us a like so that other people can find this video easily also uh, of course you can share the video to your friends and loved ones who are also writing this examination or taking part in this examination of course so that they can do well alongside with you all right um i do not forget that this video tutorial also is brought to you by o3 school jump app it is currently being displayed on the screen right it is one of the best practice app available out there right uh, uh it is by far the best trust me Right, it has all the past questions that you need. You don't need to get to physical past questions again. Right, the app is designed just like the CBT environment, the way you will see your exam on those day, on that day, rather. Right, there's a practice mode, there's a mock mode, there's a uh, study mode. Right, you can choose any mode you want. It's very flexible. You can choose questions uh, randomly or uh, decide to what to, to study by years. Right, there are all recent past questions are on the app. Likely exam questions are there also. Please go to Play Store right now. Search for OTD School Jump app, CBT practice, and work and what? Please activate it. Activation is just two thousand five hundred naira. That's what some of you used to go and buy suya, suya. So you cannot tell me that you cannot, you cannot find two thousand five hundred naira to activate the app, All right? So it is going to be very beneficial to you. Now let's quickly head on to why we are here today. This is polymorphism and allotropy. Now, uh, polymorphism is the existence of different forms of a substance. The key word there is substance. Is substance polymorphism is the existence of different forms forms of a substance in the same physical states. All right, so uh, the key word here is substance. The difference between, as we will see before this video, before this class ends, as we will see, the difference between uh, polymorphism and allotropy is in the use of the word here, yeah, choice of word we are using here. Now, uh, polymorphism is the existence of different forms of a substance, one substance having different crystalline forms, right? That's what we call polymorphism uh, in the same word, physical word state. Uh, usually, polymorphs have the same. Um, uh, uh, liquid and what gaseous states, but do not have the same solid state. They have different solid states, right? They, they operate differently in the solid form, but in other forms, they operate the same way. All right, so uh, an example of this is silica. Silica is SiO2. Silica has three crystalline forms, right? Uh, one, of, one of the crystalline forms is quartz, quartz, another one is. Uh, tridamite and then the third one is cristobalite all right these are the three crystalline forms of silica right so uh, these are known rather as what as polymorphs of what of this was substance right if you can see here silica is not an element right it's not an element it's a compound here yeah. SiO2 so you can see that what this is what as easy as the definition says uh, describes what polymorph, polymorphs are, right? They, 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 they are different forms, different forms of what? Of a substance, of the same substance, but in different words, uh, in the same words, uh, sorry, in the same physical state, but different forms of what? The same word, substance. The same physical state, different forms. You get. So this is what uh, polymorphs is what, uh, polymorphism is all about. But for allotropy, on the other hand, allotropy is the existence. Let me bring that up. Allotropy is the existence. Allotropy is the existence 
of different forms of in this occasion of an element in what the same physical state all right allotropy is the existence of different forms of an element in the same physical state so for allotropy we talk about what an element as we have seen in the first example silica silica is not an element but a compound you get so allotropy polymorphism talks about the substance this talks about what an element so this means that what allotropy is inside polymorphism that means polymorphism is an umbrella for allotropy also you get so we cannot say that what that allotropy is polymorphism in elements you get me so we can say polymorphism you can see a question polymorphism that occurs in elements in elements is dash so the simple answer there is what is simply what allotropy so allotropy is what is a form of what polymorphism because it talks about the different form of, of an element in the same word physical state right but for polymorphism we talk about what a substance so uh what else do we need to know we we'll, are going to talk about some examples but before we talk about examples of uh, of uh, allotropy let's let's move on to understand that there are two types of what allotropy so allotropy could be uh, monotropy allotropy could be monotropy monotropy or enantiotropy so allotropy could be what monotropy or what enantiotropy all right so what is different between these two so for monotropy right for monotropy there's usually no transition temperature or points between what between the allotropes of other elements right for monotropy there is no what there is no there is no transition transition what temperature or points between the allotropes right but for enantiotropy there's a transition temperature or point between what the allotropes all right so for monotropy there's no transition temperature between what between the allotropes of that element they exist independent of each other the the allotropes exist independent of what of each other but for enantiotropy uh, there's usually what a transition what temperature between what the allotropes of what of that element let's see examples of uh, let us take this off and let's see examples of monotropy and of course enantiotropy so of course carbon is carbon 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 is, is mon, carbon uh, experiences monotropy uh, monotropy examples of monotropy is of course is carbon carbon has i think four allotropes basically carbon has allotropes but the most common one is what is diamond and graphite so these are the two most common and most widely known what allotropes of carbon but there are some other ones i think there's graphene uh spread like this then there's buckminster fullerene right there's buckminster fullerene i don't know if i can spell that it's been a long time uh <laughs> buckminster fullerene something like this all right so these are the four allotropes of water carbon but these are the two most widely known allotropes we get so the allotropes of what uh, carbon what experience what monotropy right so another type of uh, 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 another what uh, element that was that shows what uh, monotropy in its nature is oxygen oxygen has two forms there's ozone there's o3 there's also what there's o2 right there's also uh, 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 another element that also uh experiences monotropy allotropy but monotropy we get because monotropy like we have said there's no transition let me go break it out clearly here yeah? you see that that there there is no transition temperature transition word sorry temperature between the allotropes all right so there's no transition or temperature they exist independent of each other now, of course example is what dam uh, 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 allotropes of carbon diamond and what and graphite of course uh, another example common example we talk about uh, allotropes of what of oxygen oxygen we have ozone we have what o2 we have what o3 also all right so uh, i think there's another third one 
Uh, let me try to remember. Uh, uh, carbon, oxygen, um, mm, mm, uh, okay. <laughs> it's escaping my head currently. But before the end of the class, if I remember, of course, I will quickly throw it in. So let's quickly talk about enantiotropy. Enantiotropy. So for enantiotropy, which is also a form of what of, of allotropy, right? We say that what there is what there is a transition what temperature between the what the allotropes. So uh, this transition temperature means that what there's a temperature at which for one will change to the other. You get one allotrope will what we change what to another what form of what of the what of the same what uh, uh, allotrope we get. So uh, 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 and vice versa. So there's a transition what temperature. Example is what uh, allotropes of sulfur. Sulfur we have room big sulfur. Room big sulfur we have monoclinic sulfur. All right, so uh, rhombic sulfur has a transition temperature. Uh, sorry, rhombic and mon monoclinic sulfur have what a transition temperature of 96 degrees what, Celsius. So when we get when this when, when once it gets to this temperature, rhombic will turn to monoclinic or monoclinic will turn to rhombic and vice versa. You get so if it was rhombic initially, get to this temperature, it will turn toward this. If it was monoclinic initially, it, turns, uh, it goes it, it gets to this temperature, it, it turns to this. So that is what what we call what transition what temperature so one can change to the other at that said temperature that is what rhombic and monoclinic so we also have uh white and gray thin another one is what white and gray thin this one has a transition temperature of 13.2 degree what celsius all right so these are what uh these are uh, uh elements that what that that is thin and uh, and uh, and sulfur now and sulfur are elements that what that are uh, that show what in anisotropy that show in anisotropy and of course as we have seen for um, elements that show uh, uh, monotropy uh, they include what uh, the, uh, carbon there's carbon there's oxygen right oxygen like oxygen there's O2 there's O3 this one is ozone all right there's O2 there's O3 then there's also uh, phosphorus phosphorus so we have what uh, white, um, uh, white and gray phosphorus. I have white, so there was white phosphorus and red phosphorus. White phosphorus, and then we have what red phosphorus. All right. So these are elements that show what uh, monotropy. Why these ones are elements that show uh, that show uh, enantiotropy. So it's very very easy to understand the concept of polymorphism and allotropy. So I'm going to reverse on reverse it quickly. On, quickly, we say that what polymorphism is the existence of different forms of a substance in the same physical state, right? We give an example: silica, right? Having quartz, uh, tridentite, and cristobalite as the crystalline forms that what that silica has. And we made no, we made no that silica is not an element. So of course uh, they are called what polymorphs. They will talk about allotropy, the existence of different forms of an element in the same what physical state. All right, so give example. We say what well, there, 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 there's uh, there are two types that can be monotropy or what enantiotropy. In monotropy, there is no transition temperature or point, but of course, they, they, they operate what independent of each other. But for uh, enantiotropy, there's a transition temperature, and of course, of which one changes to the other, and vice versa. I've well, given examples on them. Please try and remember that transition temperature. This is for sulfur, rhombic. Rhombic and monoclinic sulfur transition temperature is 96 degrees Celsius, while white and gray thin as what a transition temperature of 13.2 degrees Celsius. Please do not forget to give this video a like, do not forget to subscribe to this channel, and do not forget to share this video for others so they can watch it and also what get to benefit from the video. Also, subscribe to the YouTube channel and of course download the O3 School Jump app and go and solve questions. You'll see a lot of these questions there. All right, and I will, my name is, my name remains Owo Labitan God, AKA MC Owo Blue, and I'll see you in the next chemistry class. Thanks for watching.